We are not afraid of regulation. This was the bold statement made by Gwen Shotwell, the woman leading the world's largest aerospace company when facing U.S. House officials, demonstrating her determination to seek justice for SpaceX in response to accusations of environmental regulation violations from government officials, specifically the FAA. How did Gwen Shotwell expose the bureaucratic entanglement surrounding the FAA's Starship launch license? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. As the president and COO of SpaceX, Gwyn holds one of the most pivotal positions in the company, overseeing its day-to-day -day ops and ensuring the ambitious goals are met with precision and efficiency. Her responsibilities are vast, spanning across production, sales, mission management, customer relations, and finance. In essence, she manages the entirety of SpaceX's operational framework, ensuring all aspects of the company, from rocket launches to strategic partnerships, run smoothly and effectively. Shawwell's leadership is often credited with transforming Elon's visionary ideas into tangible operational successes. Whether it's managing the complexities of launching rockets or negotiating high-stakes contracts with organizations like NASA, her strategic decision-making has been instrumental in SpaceX's rapid growth and dominance in the aerospace industry. She navigates both technical challenges and financial constraints with equal expertise, ensuring that the company remains both innovative and sustainable. Under her stewardship, SpaceX has not only grown into a major player in space exploration, but has also redefined the way business is done in the industry making Shotwell a key driver behind its continued success. But while Shotwell's efforts previously took place quietly behind the scenes at SpaceX, we've recently seen her assertive decisiveness as legal tensions between SpaceX and government regulatory agencies have escalated. She's spoken out to defend SpaceX and their space programs against unfounded accusations. During a congressional hearing, Shotwell expressed her deep love for Texas, where SpaceX is building its massive rocket empire named Starbase. Texas, which I call my home office now. Since then, we've established state-of-the-art facilities, development tests and launch facilities. We've improved both in McGregor and we've developed these facilities down in Starbase at Boca Chica, Texas. Shawwell also emphasized the importance of SpaceX's missions and the company's work in Texas, all which aim to advance humanity to new heights. We are paving the way for humanity to be truly spacefaring and a multi-planetary species. I know that might sound crazy. It sounded crazy to me when I joined the company over 20 years ago, but I really am committed to this. However, Shotwell expressed concerns that government bureaucracy is hindering progress, especially as SpaceX strives to continue launching its massive Starship from South Texas, expand its Starlink internet operations in Bastrop, and ensure engine testing at the McGregor site. Sure, we want to continue to enhance regulatory efficiency so that regulation does not hold back technology and innovation. This is not an issue for our competitors overseas. It is an issue in the United States, less so in Texas. Specifically, with Starship, Shotwell tactfully pointed out the delays in the FAA's approval process. Well, we can build a rocket and get it prepared for launch faster than we can get the uh, bureaucracy to approve us to, to, to launch. On top of that, SpaceX president emphasized the company's cooperation with various agencies to achieve Starship's launch and reassured that the company's always complied with the law and worked diligently to protect the public. The FAA's previous environmental allegations are complete nonsense. Ultimately, only by addressing these concerns can businesses thrive. As Shotwell stated, you'll probably enhance the regulatory environment, and there's just a lot of caution that you really want to make sure that regulation does not impede progress. Later on in the hearing, Gwynn brought up a previous incident where SpaceX was fined by the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, we'll call them TCEQ for short, for operating their launch pad flood system without following the mandatory permitting process. This violation contributed to federal delays in approving the next Starship launch and stalled negotiations for the company's plan to launch and land spacecraft up to 25 times a year at Starbase. Along with federal penalties for violating the Clean Water Act at Starbase in South Texas and safety breaches during Florida launches, SpaceX has been fined a total of $785,000 in recent weeks. At Starbase, state and federal regulators fined the company for its high-pressure water deluge system, which sprays more than 100,000 gallons of water to reduce force, heat, and noise from the Starship engine during launch. Shotwell maintained that the system, which she said resembles an upside-down showerhead, was licensed and permitted by TCEQ. EPA, however, came in afterward and didn't like the license or the permit that we had for that and wanted to turn it into a federal permit, which we're working on right now.
TCEQ fined the company for operating the system without proper permits and has not yet confirmed a new one for SpaceX. However, following Shotwell's testimony at the hearing, the legal situation for SpaceX appeared to improve significantly, illustrating the exceptional negotiation skills of the woman who's long stood behind billionaire Elon Musk. TCEQ said that SpaceX could use the launch pad water deluge system within the constraints of the enforcement order, even though the order is not yet finalized. SpaceX can currently use its deluge system if the provisions of the agreed order are complied with, the TCEQ spokesman said. The order requires SpaceX to monitor wastewater, which must stay within certain parameters, also requiring SpaceX to continue the process for the proper permit to operate the deluge system, which can take a year or more. The TCEQ enforcement order is still in the public comment phase and won't officially be in effect until it appears before TCEQ commissioners, who don't meet again until October 25th. The EPA's enforcement order is open for public comment till October 21st. So, is the deluge system safe for the environment? The deluge system, like a giant upside-down shower nozzle, sprays more than 100,000 gallons of chlorinated freshwater skyward during launches and tests. While much of it is captured in retention ponds or vaporized by the heat and combustion, EPA found each use of the system discharged between 34 and 45,000 gallons directly into the wetlands surrounding the launch site. Starship uses liquid methane and oxygen for fuel, burning cleaner than other more toxic rocket fuel. However, the deluge water is still considered industrial wastewater because it's exposed to heat and combustion. Fish and Wildlife Services estimated that during each launch, the system discharges 71,000 gallons of chlorinated water and as much as 190 pounds of metals like chromium, nickel, and iron from ablation of the launch pad infrastructure. Fish and Wildlife, in its environmental consultation with the FAA, determined that there were likely adverse effects of operating the deluge and detonation suppression system. The FAA stated that they received confirmation from TCEQ August 23rd and then from the EPA September 12th that they all consider SpaceX to be in compliance with environmental laws, acknowledging that the companies initiated the process from a Texas Pollution Discharge Elimination System permit, paid the civil fines, and agreed to comply with monitoring and reporting requirements. So, what does all that mean? At this point, we know that the companies resolved the environmental issues, leaving only that FAA permit, which is pending an investigation into changes in the Starship launch record. While awaiting the FAA's decision, SpaceX has continued to do tests and modifications on Super Heavy Booster 12 and Ship 30, all aimed at achieving the ability to catch the booster with the chopstick arms. However, unlike some traditional aerospace orgs that operate under cost plus contracts where delays and cost overruns are common, New space companies like SpaceX are highly wary of bureaucracies. These regulations are often seen as barriers to growth and innovation. Elon recently expressed this frustration on X, saying, America is being smothered by even larger mountains of irrational regulations from ever more new agencies that serve no purpose apart from the aggrandizement of bureaucrats. As a leader in commercial spaceflight revolution, SpaceX is working at a breakneck pace, becoming the most active launch provider in the world. The company is not only launching astronauts, satellites, and cargo, but is also pushing the envelope of space exploration with the ultimate goal of getting to other planets. SpaceX has poured enormous resources into its flagship project, the Starship, and each test flight has achieved major milestones testing the limits of the system and proving to everyone its reliability. The fifth Starship flight test is poised to take things a step further with an ambitious attempt to return the Super Heavy booster to the launch site and then catch it in midair, a feat unprecedented in the history of spaceflight. This mission is a big stepping stone for NASA's Artemis program that aims to take astronauts back to the moon. NASA's chosen Starship is the human-rated lander lander for this Artemis mission, which will bring astronauts to the moon's south pole for the very first time. So for this reason, it is quite crucial that Starship is fully operational ASAP. These early test flights are vital in demonstrating the rocket's reliability and testing advanced technologies like in-space refueling, which are necessary for the Artemis lunar landings. On a broader scale, there's also the international race to consider. China plans to land their astronauts on the moon by 2030, and NASA's admin Bill Nelson has made it clear that U.S. astronauts need to be the first to return. Kevin Coleman, FAA's Associate Administrator for Space Transportation, recently echoed this sentiment in a discussion with lawmakers, emphasizing the importance to get back to the moon before China and reaffirmed the FAA's commitment to supporting the nation's space industry. However, the current regulatory framework is directly delaying Starship test flights, which could undermine U.S. national interests. 
It's clear that agencies like the FAA need to ensure that their regulations align with the government's national security and foreign policy priorities. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for checking it out, and we'll see you next time. Bye.